This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The next chapter deals with enterprise risk management. In other words, how can you get a system which applies proper risk management to the whole of perhaps a very large organisation? And the key to this is this uh, diagram. Uh, this uh, shows uh, in really in three dimensions uh, all the little areas that, that you have to apply some sort of risk management, risk identification, risk management and response to it. So uh, across the top, and again, you have to know the, the sections in this. Uh, there have been questions where some of these have been blanked out. And you have to suggest what, what will the proper titles be. So if you just look across the top first uh, here, uh, you should recognize uh, what uh, these terms are, strategic operations, reporting, compliance. And those really are the four kind of families of risks that we've already discussed. So your strategic risk is a kind of long-term risk, maybe that we've gone into the wrong company or country, uh, that we've uh, bet on the wrong technology, maybe that uh, we are uh, are, are targeting a consumer group that is shrinking. Operational risk, that is the risk that things simply go wrong on a day-to-day -day basis, for example, human error, machine breakdown, and so on. Reporting risk is making sure that the uh, risk, the uh, reports we get, management reports, for example, or even statutory reports, are correct. Uh, if these are wrong, we can either mislead ourselves when making management decisions, or mislead the government or regulators who may then, of course, uh, punish us. And finally, there's compliance risks uh, that we comply with uh, laws, for example, on consumer credit, health and safety, uh, employment law, banking law. And if we break any of these, then large fines, damages, and perhaps uh, our right to trade taken away from us. So those are the four kind of categories of risk that we're really talked about. Going back then into, into the, the diagram, kind of in that, in that direction, uh, you have really a successive breakdown of uh, the, the whole company, the whole enterprise or group, you might call it, uh, into smaller and smaller units as you go through. And the, they've called these, uh, first of all, the entity level, the, the, the group, if you like, uh, the, the, the group which is listed on the stock exchange, which embodies everything which is kind of below it. And then you have uh, divisions. So the group could be uh, in the motor industry and the divisions could be commercial vehicles, lorries, vans and so on. Uh, and it could be uh, ordinary cars, uh, consumer vehicles. And then we have uh, business units. We might have uh, manufacturing divisions. We might have sales divisions. We might have a finance division even to provide finance to our purchases. And then we might have subsidiaries, different subsidiaries in different countries, perhaps, uh, as the smallest kind of unit that we've got down to. And risk has to be managed at each of these levels, all the way down to, to the bottom. Again, getting back to the Volkswagen uh, example, uh, it is the entity at the top which has been really very seriously hurt. But quite down through these subdivisions, quite were the 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 uh, the, you know, the the misrepresentation happened of misreporting the emission figures uh, hasn't been made completely clear yet uh, but something went wrong in the risk management that it wasn't spotted or controlled and then going down the front uh, here uh, we have got eight stages really of measuring the different risks in each of the divisions and subunits and smaller and smaller uh, almost trading units as you go into the, the diagram. And first uh, there is the internal environment. And the internal uh, environment, this, that's just looking at the, the different sorts of risks, yeah, the internal uh, environment here uh, is really the, the general kind of culture or values uh, in which the institution operates. There are some types of business uh, which have a culture, really, uh, which is very careful indeed uh, over risk management, uh, whereas other uh, uh, types of organisation 
might be a little bit more relaxed uh, or a little bit more careless uh, over how they manage risks. So the, if, the, if you're dealing with uh, uh, an institution where the attitude to risk is fairly happy-go-lucky, really, then in a way that's going to set the tone for everything that comes afterwards. But if you're dealing with an institution or an organisation where the attitude to risk is fairly strict, really, and people want things to be done properly, they want all the authorizations to be signed up properly and so on, it's well managed, uh, then again this has got implications if it comes further. Objective setting. Uh, what is the, the risk appetite? What is the risk tolerance? How much risk will people put up with? Uh, if you're making uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, for example, uh, what level of side effects or harm to the people taking the pharmaceuticals uh, is uh, reckoned to be acceptable? Because there will be some level, almost residual level, uh, which we'll have to probably deal with. If you're an airline, uh, what risk delay are you going to be prepared to put up with? What risk of accident are you going to be prepared to put up with? We hope zero there. Uh, uh, what risk of uh, your suitcases going astray are you going to be willing to put up with? So we have to set out the objectives of these exercises. Event identification we've talked to, how are we going to go about and what is the scheme, what is the system by which we go through and uh, observe, ask people, uh, perhaps look at what our competitors are doing uh, and, and, and really see how are we going to uh, identify the danger spots throughout the organization from a holding company, holding the group all the way down to really quite small subunits. And again, we've been kind of through this, a lot, a lot of this kind of risk stuff is rather similar stuff presented in a different model. Having identified the risk, then there is the, the, the assessment of it, the impact and the likelihood, what damage will be done, what is the probability of that happening and this allows us to prioritize the the risks and work out then a risk response basically that's the tara we can transfer the risk we can avoid the risk we can reduce the risk uh, or can accept the risk uh, or, or uh, th those are really the four things that we can we can we can be doing Having decided what we want to do with the risks, for example, we want to avoid it, how are we going to make sure we do that? So we want to avoid uh, very large bad debts. What uh, procedures are we going to put in place, the control activities, if you like, uh, to ensure that we, we don't run the risk of very bad debts? How are we going to make sure that people, for example, are set appropriate credit limits? Or we want to reduce the risk of... Uh, components being sold to our customers which may then break an operation and cause some awful accident with a car or an aeroplane. So it's all very well thinking we want to reduce the risk, we want to avoid the risk, but it's not going to happen unless these control activities, the policies, the procedures and so on uh, are put into place and essentially written down, uh, documented in some way. We have to uh, feedback, we have to have information communication uh, here. Uh, maybe it is the uh, uh, discovery of a new risk. Maybe it is discovering that, uh, oh gosh, we're having quite a lot of incidents here that's really running above the tolerance. We have to do a reporting feedback. Uh, the danger here is, to some extent, cover-up. Uh, that uh, some sort of damage or risk is uh, occurring more frequently than we thought. Uh, we know it's a bad thing uh, and what people may try to do is to cover it up or even be frightened to report to their superiors that these events are occurring. And finally there is monitoring. We want to make sure the controls are functioning, the procedures are functioning. We want to make sure that the, the risks are, are kept up to date and that the responses are kept up to date. We want to improve our risk management where possible. So those eight items down the front that we've got here, internal environment, objective setting, event identification, risk assessment, what are we going to do about it, the risk response, that will give us the control activities that relate to those risk responses, 
Then we need uh, communication and information about how well we're doing, basically. No point setting objectives at the start uh, if you then kind of don't, don't have any kind of comparison with actual performance and objective performance, and then the overall overarching monitoring. UK listed companies are now required to publish a risk report as part of their annual report. In other words, along with the chairman statement, directors report the financial statements. The purpose of the risk report is to inform shareholders and others about the organization's main risks, those that have been identified, and what the organization is doing about them. This is to give shareholders more confidence that the organization is taking risk seriously, because of course, if the organization undertakes risk, it is putting shareholders' wealth at risk. Uh, and uh, gives this confidence to, to shareholders. And it also, I think, makes the directors focus on their risk management activities because they have this public statement uh, of risks and what they're doing about it. Uh, there is in the uh, notes accompanying this, there is an excerpt from the Unilever uh, risk report, and it is well worth reading that.